how true it is. Oh, we're glad to welcome you here today to worship with us. Particularly if you're a guest this morning, we want to welcome you and point out that there is a double duty guest card in the pews in front of you there. And if you're a guest with us, we'd really love to have a little bit more information about you, uh, an opportunity to get back to you through your phone number or your email. And so if you're a guest this morning, we would simply ask that you fill that out. On the reverse side is for anybody, and that is to list some prayer requests that you might have. If you don't want that, if you want it just shared with us as staff, then you could check that little box and it won't get published. But, you know, the more prayers, the better, I think, is, is the way it ought to be. So if you feel uh, comfortable, uh, we'll publish it as well. So double duty, guest on one side, anybody on the other. A number of announcements this morning, and I'll try to whip through them relatively quickly. Starting today, today we have the uh, Youth Potato, uh, Baked Potato Fundraiser. We'd invite you to stay and take part in that and support our youth that way because they're already, wisely, they're already preparing for fly this coming summer and, uh, some, and those, are, those are real expenses and uh, you can be a help that way by uh, taking part in their fundraisers. As long as we're talking about the youth, a couple of other things as well. The next three Sundays now, they're changing their, their can, uh, their, their aluminum can, uh, what should we call it, a fundraiser, I guess. And so it'll be the next three Sundays in a row they will accept uh, cans right here. And then that's, that's kind of it because it wasn't getting used that much the other way they were doing it. And then there's a, a, another event uh, in just a couple of weeks called uh, a fundraiser for Fortify Fly. And that's an important uh, ministry too. It's a brand new AFLC ministry that's intended to sort of, in my way of thinking about it anyway, it's uh, sort of uh, to uh, establish a fund, a revolving fund that will be permanent in order to make sure that they're able to reserve enough spots out, out in uh, Colorado for that fly convention. In the past, it's, the timeline gets too short. And so if the numbers expand, too late to add more rooms. But with this fortified pl fly plan, it'll be a way to more easily plan ahead and have enough rooms for them. So those are three important things to think about uh, uh, supporting our youth. And again, this Sunday morning then, that uh, baked, potato, uh, baked potato fundraiser. Next Sunday, there's a concert here that'll take up, if not all of the service, very nearly all of the service. Next Sunday, a concert with uh, Jerry Nelson. Not, not the Jerry Nelson that ministered here regularly, but another person. I'm, I'm told he was, he's been here before uh, to share his music. But if you'll notice in the announcements too, we need some volunteers for that. So there's three volunteers that are needed for next Sunday. One to work with the CDs and DVDs, and then two, other, uh, two others to provide child care and so on. So if you're able to just take a look at that and to be involved that way, that would be, that would be wonderful. A couple of other things too that we want to talk about this morning, just a couple more. I think I covered most of them with the exception of uh, ministry towards uh, people that are in the service. And this you've done before. Last year I know you did it. And that's that Bible stick ministry where uh, by your uh, donations we can purchase an a MP3 player that has the New Testament on it and some other selected psalms and goes uh, and given to uh, service people. And so they have the God's Word right with them that way. They can listen to it and so on. But as you look down, at the, this is under the Board of Missions announcements. As you look down, just we wanted you to notice that October is match month. And so gifts towards that uh, need to come in by the end of October in order to be matched. Are there other announcements uh, besides Deb? Deb is going to come and just say a word. Did I miss anything else in announcements? I think I got them. Yeah, we're going to do that in a second. Yeah, in a second. As soon as Deb is done, we're going to watch a video. But Deb, where are you? There you are. Okay. I'm all those. Oh. Think back to those toddler and preschool years and what fun that age is, the joy those kids have in learning new things and just being alive, and also how you wish you had eight arms at that time. 
We have 20 to 25 little ones of that age in our church every morning or day of the week. And it would be really nice to have just a couple of more arms and hands to help out the dedicated gals back there who work with them all the time. So if you would be willing to give two and a half hours from 9 to 11.30 on a Monday through Thursday morning, they really don't need it on Friday because that's a smaller group. The phone number for the daycare is actually in your bulletin every Sunday at the bottom of the announcement page. Just give a quick call there and you can go and relive or enjoy those days again of the toddlerhood because they are a lot of fun. You do not need to be able to get on the floor. I think it's more fun, but you don't have to be able to do that. And some of it is just being there to take the child who needs to go to the bathroom or to redirecting the child back into the circle and just plain getting the snack ready too. It just helps so much to have one more set of hands and they are very, very appreciative. So please give a call, or if you have a friend, not in our church, but a good Christian friend that you know would be willing to do that, and let them know about it as well. So there's lots of ways to get involved in ministry here at Good Shepherd. Just two more things this morning. One is that at uh, the uh, Cocado Manor Chapel on Thursday of this week, there's a, a, a very informative seminar that uh, you might want to take advantage of, and that's called Caregiving. The Long Journey of Grief, it's called. But it's to equip people who may become caregivers as well as those who already are in some of the special uh, needs and callings that you folks have as caregivers. So that is a presentation this Thursday night at 6 p.m. at the Cocado Manor Chapel. And then the last thing is we do have a video. I believe it's on the, the uh, Bible. Is it the? Oh, it's the Jerry Nelson. Okay, video to watch. Very good. Would you welcome Jerry Nelson? Well, I can hardly wait to share my music and my heart with y'all. You see, this is all about connecting with a God who wants more than anything to connect with us. He's a God of incredible variety, so I'll be doing a myriad of cross-generational styles, from solid traditional and gospel, to jazz and Hebraic, to Celtic and classics. Something for everyone's taste buds. Oh, and singing with the Rocky Mountain Praise Choir on screen will certainly get your juices flowing. Connecting with my audiences is so essential that I've been taking lessons from a master storyteller and humorist. Here it shows up in a gospel song. Singing hallelujah, feeling fine When this small man Incidentally, that stream of video on screen isn't there just to dazzle your senses. It's to help us focus on the God who breathed all of creation into existence. You might feel at times like you're sitting right beside the keyboard or in the middle of the orchestra. But more important, I hope you sense you are in the middle of His awesome presence, finding renewed hope for the challenges of a pretty crazy world. So join me as we worship the Sovereign of this universe. See you soon. That's next Sunday right here at Good Shepherd, so don't miss that if you can help it. We have a privilege today of hearing from Emma and Haley about uh, Fly. Are you here, Emma or Haley? There they are. last year to go to fly or not last year last summer to go to the fly convention in 2015 um, okay so one of the many things that fly like how it impacted my life was just being in like the Rocky Mountains it is gorgeous up there and being surrounded by God's creation was just so moving and so amazing to be a part of and it was just like it was just, I was in awe of everything that he did in there and it's just so beautiful and another big part that impacted me was the worship times. 
Um, it was amazing to be in a room filled with 2,000 other believers, all praising God, and it was just so moving, and it really had a lasting impact on my life, and like I would love to be able to go back and experience it again, because it's just amazing to be a part of, and you just have so much sense of community, because you are all there for one reason, to support God. As Jack and Ethan mentioned last week, the theme of identity, or the theme of Fly was identity, and that was really impactful, especially as I was going through high school, to just remember that nothing else really matters as long as I know that my identity is in Christ. So that was really cool to just kind of go through high school and think, oh, I have a really big test today, but my identity is not in my score. Oh, I have a swim meet tonight, but my identity is not in how I do. Oh, my identity is not in how, what people think of me. But nothing else really matters as long as my identity is in Christ. And that was something that was really instilled upon us. And that was one thing that really impacted me a lot. And another thing that was just really cool was the fellowship that we had there with 2,000 other believers that were our age. It was really cool just to be with them and to worship them. And like, you would just... As, as you were praising God, you're in the room, and it almost like moved me to tears just to think of how we're all there together worshiping our God, and it was just a, an amazing experience, and it's so wonderful, and it's, we thank you all so much for your support, and your financial support is much appreciated. And also, make sure you stay after church today and participate in the potato fundraisers so that we can send even more youth to such an amazing convention. And also, the aluminum can drive. There is a trailer in the corner of the parking lot where you can drop off your cans. The container on the north side of the church is no longer being used. And so you can drop off your, can for the next, your cans for the next three Sundays. So thank you so much. Thank you, girls. Appreciate that. Reminder, that's for sure, a good reminder. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, oh yes, we've heard so many ways to get involved. We've heard so many things that we ought to be thinking about and involved in. But now, Lord, would you direct our attention to you and to you alone. As, uh, Lord, we intend now to gather together, sing praises to you, hear from your word, worship and praise you, uh, the only God, the only true God that there is in our presence today with us. Oh, let us, let us realize that through the power of your Holy Spirit. Let us worship you and you alone together. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand. If you can stand, let's stand for hymn number 547.
remain standing now as we go through the uh, communion service. That is located uh, inside the back cover of your hymnal. Inside the back cover of your hymnal. We confess our sins together. We bow our hearts before the Lord as we do that. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto Thee that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against Thee in thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to Thine infinite mercy, and beseech Thee for Christ's sake, grant us remission of all our sins, and by Thy Holy Spirit, Increase in us true knowledge of Thee and of Thy will, and true obedience to Thy word, to the end that by Thy grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Continue to stand now in respect for God's word as Josh comes to read the scripture this morning. Our Old Testament reading is from Habakkuk, chapter 1, 1 through 4, and then also chapter 2, 1 through 4 of Habakkuk. Habakkuk 1, 1 through 4. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at, un at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous, so that justice is perverted. And then also of the same book, 2, 1 through 4. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, he is puffed up. His desires are not upright. But the righteous will live by faith. And then the New Testament reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1-14. through 14. 2 Timothy chapter 1, starting at verse 1 through verse 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as my forefathers did with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives also in you. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands." For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. 
So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord, or be ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed. And I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. What you have heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Here ends the reading. And then if you'll open your hymnals to number 138, that's the Nicene Creed. And as we continue to prepare our hearts for communion this Sunday, we uh, confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. It's on uh, hymn 138. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one universal and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And you may be seated. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen Now you can be seated again. <laughs> Invite our ushers now to come and receive the morning offering. And we pray together. Heavenly Father, your bountiful goodness is so apparent during this season of harvest. Oh Lord, how you watered our earth this summer beyond even belief. And yet, uh, so many good things you've given us. Not just in our croplands, but Lord, in our gardens. And Lord, that you would water our hearts too with your Holy Spirit. So we give back to you just a small portion 
in thanksgiving for your goodness to us, love for you. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. In previous chapters and verses of Luke, uh, Jesus had been teaching and admonishing the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Uh, But now, in our text for today, Jesus shifts his attention to his closest followers, his disciples. And he turns to to them in order to warn them, in order to encourage them, and in order to correct them. And this is important for Jesus to do because where else in this fallen world are we going to hear these important warnings and encouragements? Who else is concerned enough about us to correct us, to steer us in the right direction? Nobody. Only from God and His Word and His people will we get this necessary information. The life of discipleship is to be one of constant growth. We are to be holy as God is holy. Jesus continually teaches his disciples these things so that they will know. So that they will know what the power or what the Christian walk is all about. And when Jesus rebukes and warns and admonishes his followers, it is out of pure love for his brothers and sisters. He doesn't speak maliciously or with a spiteful tone, but he does so with tears in his eyes, with a genuine concern for people's souls. And then there is much for us to learn as we look at the Word and watch Jesus interact with people in his day. And I'm not going to lie to you, it was difficult for me to come up with a theme for this message because as you look at this text for today, many commentators uh, break it down into four separate sayings. And yet we know that there is a common denominator here. Sometimes it's hard to find as you are uh, preparing a sermon. But let's read this, this portion of Scripture, this portion of Luke this morning, and let's see if you can uh, spot these spot these four lessons that Jesus is giving to his disciples, but yet they're all related. Please stand as I read from Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, verses 1 through 10. Reading in Jesus' name. Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause people to sin are bound to come. But woe to that person through whom they come. It would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around his neck than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. So watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. He replied, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Would he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down to eat? Would he not rather say, Prepare my supper? Get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink. After that, you may eat and drink. Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. Let's pray. Lord, this is your word, and we pray that the Holy Spirit today would come and enlighten our hearts and minds, help us to understand rightly what you want us to know today. Lord, and sanctify us, Lord, in this truth that we are learning. In your name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. So the theme that I came up with for this sermon today is the duty of the disciple to serve God in his kingdom. As disciples of Christ, we are to serve our Lord and Savior. We know this. We are his servants. He is the master. 
And our lives as Christians are to be lives of humble faith and service to God. But how do we do this? How do we serve God? God doesn't need our service, does he? No. But our neighbor needs our service. God intends that our service to him be primarily expressed by serving other people. This means that we first serve our brothers and sisters in Christ, with whom we should be living in close connection. Jesus tells us that temptations to sin are bound to come to us, to the church, to the faith community. Sin is going to come. Temptations to sin are going to come. And there's not really any way to get around that one. We all still struggle with a sinful nature. And so, therefore, we will, from time to time, fall into sin. We will sin against one another. And certainly, Satan and his followers, they don't take a break from trying to put things before our eyes in order to cause us to sin against God. They never cease in doing so. It's a given, and and that's what they do as evil beings. But Jesus warns us here that as his followers, living in the community of God with one another, we are not to be the cause of another's sinning. He gives us a very strong warning here, doesn't he? He pronounces a woe upon those that do. And it's a very graphic picture that he gives us. Jesus tells us that it would be better for us to be killed in a violent and terrible manner than for us to lead another believer astray. Especially a new believer. Think about that. Jesus states here that it would be better for a believer to be drowned in the sea with no hope of escape than it would be for him to lead another believer into sin. And that's a powerfully stern warning from Jesus. And what Jesus is getting at is that sin is super serious. Sin is very serious. It can lead someone to eternal death and torment in hell. And we saw that text last week give us a picture of what hell is like. Sin is nothing to be messed around with. Not only does sin leave unbelievers to a horrible fate, but Jesus warns us here that it can lead our believing brothers and sisters away from eternal life. And we better not have any part in doing that. If we do, Jesus warns us that we too are in danger and we face terrible judgment. We must be careful in what we do, what we say, and what example we set forth for our brothers and sisters. These things can certainly have an influence on other Christians, especially if they are less mature in the faith. Instead, our service to our brothers and sisters is to help them grow in their faith. Encourage them to come to church and hear God's word. Watch their kids for them so they can go to Bible study. Whatever the Lord leads you to do, do it. Just do something so that the baby believers don't stay baby believers. It's necessary for us to grow in faith in God. Just as as necessary as it is for an infant to grow. Because that doesn't happen all by itself, does it? An infant needs to be nourished and fed in order to grow. And so it is the same with a believer. If this feeding does not happen both physically and spiritually, one is certain to die. We cannot feed ourselves, and especially when we think of babies, absolutely helpless. Absolutely helpless to feed themselves. They have no idea how to do it. Babies, especially baby Christians, are completely dependent upon others for their sustenance. 
And so I can tell a new believer, I can tell them to read God's Word, come to church, make use of the means of grace. But if I don't disciple them, and if I don't train them, come alongside them as Timothy, or as Paul came alongside Timothy, then they may not make it. That seed of faith may not last in their life. They may give up trying to understand and turn away on their own. They may be tempted to sin and stray from Christ. They may begin listening to false teaching. Sometimes it sounds so close to Christianity, but it's not. And if they begin listening to this false teaching, it will lead them down to the path down a path of destruction. Brothers and sisters in Christ, help your fellow Christians. Be there for them. Serve them in this way. Watch out for their well-being. And all the while, Jesus says, watch out for yourselves. Make sure you're not a stumbling block for them. Make sure you are living the way that you are confessing. Essentially, Jesus is saying, don't be a hypocrite. Read the word for yourself. Don't give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. Go to Bible study. Be equipped for service in God's kingdom. God has a desire for that for each of us. And you know, when we think about community, even in a non-Christian sense, community is, is something that is It's kind of foreign today, isn't it? Everyone is so individualistic and keeps to him or herself. And we tend to think about, even even when going to church, we tend to think about ourselves most often, about what we can get out of church. We are not to come to church and isolate ourselves like maybe sometimes we do out in the world. But instead, we are to come to church in order to be a part of God's community, God's family. And we are to come to serve each other. And as I said, God sees us as a family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are meant to live life together, caring for one another, building each other up in the faith. And so some of us here today, perhaps, We need to change our view of what church is, what church is supposed to be. And we need to begin to see the way God intends it to be for us. And this leads us right into what Jesus says next. He says that we can serve our brothers and sisters by doing what he says in verse 3 and 4. And so if another Christian sins against you, what are you to do? Well, Jesus says here, you are to rebuke them in a humble, in a humble and loving manner and point them to the cross, just as Jesus did. And if that person repents of that sin, all of us are obligated to forgive them. Even if he sins against you in the same manner, over and over and over again, if he repents, you are to forgive And see, it's the truth of God that requires that we rebuke our erring brother. We have to because of the truth. But it's the love of God that requires us to forgive him. Both are necessary. And I mentioned that as a church, as believers, we are a family, right? Well, families have problems. All families do. Forgiveness and reconciliation are necessary in families. Otherwise, it's hard for families to stay together. And we see the result in our world today. Divorce and alienation from people. All sorts of things. All sorts of familial familial problems in our society. And so when we look at the congregation, and we say this is a family, we probably see some problems sometimes, don't we? Maybe somebody in this congregation has hurt you. Maybe you've hurt somebody else. Jesus would have you seek them out. Take the initiative 
to restore that relationship. Forgiving each other is the way we must live together. It's the only way we can live together. This is how we serve, another way we serve each other as family, is by forgiving. This is the proper and and gracious way to serve our erring brother and sister's souls, too. Forgiveness is essential to spiritual life. It's absolutely vital. The disciple must do as Christ does by forgiving and forgetting what a fellow, when, a, when a fellow believer repents. And if we don't, we're not only disobeying Christ, but we are stunting our brother's growth as a believer. We all sin numerous times a day. Therefore, we all need forgiveness numerous times a day. This is how we continually live spiritually. The grace of forgiveness is to the human soul what sunshine is to the daffodil or the rose or the tree. It provides the hope and freedom necessary to persevere in a harsh, harsh place. Forgiveness is is the mercy of God that is so vital for us to grow spiritually. Forgiveness must be right on the tip of our tongues, ready to forgive at a moment's notice. Be willing to do such as Jesus has done for you. And the apostles here that Jesus is speaking to, we see that they realize that this is a really hard task. And so they, sit, they ask him and they cry out, increase our faith. They, they think they need more faith in order to do this. But Jesus encourages them and, and, and increases their faith by doing so. He says, even though, even though they have a small faith, even though that is not the most important thing for the task at hand, The most important thing is not the quantity or the bigness of your faith, but the quality of the object of that faith, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus points to that, the mustard seed and elsewhere and and the smallness of that as a reference point. Even extremely small faith is sufficient for doing great and impossible things, such as forgiving someone especially someone who has sinned against you. Sometimes it seems impossible. But Jesus is telling us here that it's not. And we're not to be content with a small faith, as, you know, we're not saying that. We should desire to grow and become mature. But a small faith in Christ is all that is needed to do this one thing here that God is concerned with. Forgiveness. Forgiving someone is not to be dependent on our faith, but it needs to be dependent on God's mercy and grace. The mercy and grace that has been shown to each of us in Jesus Christ's death on the cross. And this is another way we, we, we are to serve our brothers and sisters. And so Jesus goes on to teach the disciples about service by giving them this short parable. He says, basically, imagine, imagine this situation. And so he sets before their minds a servant that plows or maybe a shepherd that watches after sheep. And he asks them a few rhetorical questions, something that you know, nobody would argue with, with here. Would a master allow a servant to eat before he does? No. Of course not. The servant would not expect to either. His service must come first. That's his job. That's what he does. The servant must prepare the master's meal and then he can eat. And he would know this and he would not argue with his master. And the master would not even give his servant thanks because he was only doing his job. Do we deserve thanks for the jobs we do every day? No, we're hired to do it. 
It's what is expected of us. And so what Jesus is getting at here in, in telling this short little parable is that we are to serve the Lord in, in various ways, hopefully the ways that he's been teaching us about here. And, and, and we're not to expect a reward for it or thanks in return for all that we do. And yet he tells us to serve. And as Jesus says in this, the last verse here, it's because we are unworthy servants. It's because we are unworthy of his grace and mercy. We are only doing our duty as servants of the Lord. These things are expected of us. They are commanded of us elsewhere in Scripture. We are only doing our duty as, as his servants. And instead, we should expect that if we do not do our duty, what is expected of us, that then we may be punished as a servant would be. And so, I think Jesus is giving his disciples here a proper perspective on what servitude is. And so as servants, when we apply it to ourselves, we must realize we don't get to, we don't get to make the rules or the decisions. We simply follow the master humbly and simply, simply follow him. And yet, we know that Jesus is not like a human master. Jesus is the kind of master that desires to serve us first. He does so as we come to the worship service and we hear his word. And as we come to the Lord's Supper and receive his body and blood. It is from, it is from there that he sends us out to serve in the proper, proper way. Humility and grace is needed on our part as we serve others. And even when all is said and done and when we have not deserved anything for our service, God promises to reward us. He promises to re reward and thank those who are faithful to him. And now don't go on thinking that these rewards are based upon anything that we've done because we've already established that we are unworthy servants. But God likes to heap up grace upon grace and simply because he is a good God. Mercy and grace flow out of Christ just like a raging river rushing down a mountain. He freely gives because he is good. And so as we go about our daily lives, it would be good to remember our brothers and sisters even Monday through Saturday. God is forming a new community, a new family out of the whole world, out of the nations. And he did this by dying on the cross and providing the sacrifice necessary for your forgiveness, for their forgiveness. And Jesus will never lead us into temptation. But he instead leads us to green pastures and living water as we come to his word. And sure, Jesus from time to time has to rebuke us, but he does so not because he is angry with us, but because he loves us. See, Jesus, the master, he feeds his servants first. And he increases our faith with his word. He cares for us, encourages us to be a part of his community, the community of faith. And thankfully, God does so. Thankfully, he forgives us. And he does so over and over again for the same things, right? How many times have you sinned in the same way? If you repent, he will forgive you over and over again. And you know what? He forgets those sins too as they are cast into the sea, as it says in Micah chapter 7, verse 19. As they are as far from us as the east is from the west. And you can find that in Psalm 103, verse 12. See, in this way, our Lord goes above and beyond all that we could ask or think 
and that he forgives us unworthy servants even though we have failed to do all that is required of us. And see, that was... That is what the cross was for. The cross is all about forgiveness. It's about reconciliation and restoration. And so, because of that, the church has to be about those things too. The church has to be about forgiveness and reconciliation and restoration. But this is only going to happen with the help of the Holy Spirit and with the strength of God, our Father. But isn't it good in the meantime, as we seek these things that God commands us to do, isn't it good to know that God gives us brothers and sisters, people of like mind, to help us out? They can pray for us, they can care for us in our time of need. So let's continue on, continue carrying that work that Christ established at the cross as we do our duty as his disciples. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for doing it all for us at the cross, for taking our sin upon you, for forgiving us our many, many sins, Lord. And as we continue to sin daily, Lord, lead us to come to you, to seek out your grace and mercy. Lord, help us to lead others as well back to you when they have sinned. Help us to disciple our brothers. Help us to watch out for each other because, Lord, no one else in this world is going to do it. And we pray, Lord, that you would, by your Holy Spirit, empower us to do these things. In your name I pray. Amen. As we come to the Lord's Supper today, and we talked about it in Sunday school just a little bit, uh, we, we, the Lord's Supper is intended for believers. It's intended for those who are con- confessing Jesus Christ as their Savior from their sin. They've claimed that forgiveness that he offers. And now he invites those that do so to come and partake of his body and blood. And so with that, uh, let me read the exhortation before the communion. Dear friends in Christ, in order that you may receive his holy sacrament in a worthy manner, you should carefully consider what you must now believe and do. From the words of Christ, this is my body which is given for you. This is my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. You should believe that Jesus Christ is present with his body and blood as the words declare. From Christ's words for the forgiveness of sins, you should also believe that Jesus gives to you his body and blood to strengthen your assurance that your sins are forgiven. And finally, you should do as Christ commands you when he says, Take, eat, drink of it, all of you. This do in remembrance of me. If you believe these words of Christ and do as he has commanded, then you have properly examined yourselves and may eat Christ's body and drink his blood in a worthy manner. You should also unite in giving thanks to Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for such a great gift as this and should love one another with a pure heart, and thus with the whole Christian church, have comfort and joy in Christ our Lord. To this end, may God the Father give you his grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had eaten, 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. At this time, we'll call upon the ushers and the helpers, and then, uh, yeah, the ushers will, will guide you forward. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. (laughs) A crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who now has bestowed upon you his holy body and blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all your sins, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and your everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Think about the words from John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. 
This is the body of Christ broken for you. Our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who now has bestowed upon you his holy body and blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all your sins, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. talk about the good shepherd we know that the good shepherd feeds us and takes care of us but John 10 verse 11 tells us and Jesus says I am the good shepherd the good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep amen and lean on that promise Our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who now has bestowed upon you his holy body and blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all your sins, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen.
Hear the word of God from 1 Peter chapter 3. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. We have that same promise that one day, as believers, we will be resurrected as well. Amen. crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who now has bestowed upon you his holy body and blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all your sins, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. Listen to the word of God from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. 
this is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. you. Our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who now has bestowed upon you his holy body and blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all your sins, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. Please stand as that you as we receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to...